Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Blue Moon video. This month we have a blue moon in the sky. So that is a blue moon is when you have two full moons in one calendar month. And we are having that this month. In last time's monthly, which I'll link above, I would have mentioned that I'll do a breakout video for this blue moon because I couldn't fit the content in the August monthly. So we had a full moon already in August and that was a full moon in Capricorn, Shravana Nakshatra on the 1st of August. And we're going to have another full moon on the 31st of August in Aquarius, Satyabhishak Nakshatra. So for every single sign I will go through and talk about this full moon. Now the moon is quite close to Saturn. It's in the same house as Saturn. So honesty is going to be a hallmark of this full moon. Uh, and the Lord of Satyabhishak is Rahu. Rahu is in Aries. So this is going to be honesty with the self when we're looking at the analysis and the meaning of this full moon. That's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with honesty with the self. And with Satyabhishak, we often have a battle between light and dark. And I'll give you an example of a famous person, Robin Williams. I'll put his chart on the screen. You'll be able to see uh, he has Rahu and Moon in Satyabhishak Nakshatra. Now that's happening in his fifth house. So he alchemized whatever inner struggles he had in a really creative way. And if you're watching my archetype series, I'm sure he's going to feature in there. When I look at the comedian, I'll show you where that part of the chart is. But basically, I wanted to bring him up just to say that he's a good example of a Satyabhishak person. A true Satyabhishak person is going to, within themselves, battle between light and dark. That's just a part of the life for Satyabhishak. So I've got here struggle of light or dark. Now this could manifest in so many different ways and so many simple ways, so many small ways. So do I stay or do I go? Do I belong or should I be elsewhere? You know, uh, do I need to change me or do I need to avoid them? This can, you, you think of all the different little battles of light and dark we have within ourselves. Well, Satyabhishak will, will deal with these things. Satyabhishak Nakshatra is also a healer. There's healing energy within Satyabhishak Nakshatra and such people may have, you know, some kind of healing ability or, or gift or presence or something like that. The other thing is Satyabhishak Nakshatra people can also heal groups, can heal the collective. If you've got a writing gift with that or something like that, you could write books and help groups of people heal or uplift themselves. So let's just get straight in, shall we? I think we're just going to go for it. So how about we look at Aries? So this is Aries, Aries moon, Aries ascendant. You can look from, yeah, why not? Look from uh, all different perspectives. So look, look from your moon, look from your ascendant, look from your sun, if you would like to. So Aries, what are we looking at here? So we are looking at the 31st of August. We have a full moon in Aquarius, Satyabhishak Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So this full moon could illuminate a struggle you have within yourself around how you allow new opportunities to come in versus how you might sabotage those new opportunities. Okay, what is it within you that might sabotage new opportunities? And could it be, you know, we are in the 11th house here, maybe one of the ways you sabotage new opportunities is by spending too much time with friends. I mean, but we need to spend time with friends. Some of that is needed. So obviously there's balance required here, but that's just one thought that I had, one thought that I jotted down for you. Now you could also be looking at the difference between goals you have for yourself versus goals you have to impress other people. So when you look at your goals, why are you wanting to achieve the things that you want to achieve? Is it really genuinely because you're going to enjoy it or is it because you think others will find you very impressive? That kind of thing. Okay, so these are just a couple of ways of looking at this 
full moon but basically the extra moonlight here is going to illuminate some kind of struggle that you have going on within yourself and the goal here isn't to do anything or to fix anything we're just becoming aware and in the awareness your awareness power will grow and the problem will become smaller so that's why we do awareness work because when your awareness expands the problem stays the same size but it kind of shrinks if your consciousness was smaller the problem would seem bigger it's that kind of thing so Aries I hope that has been a good overview for you you can let me know in the comments how you get on with this full moon I'd love to hear your experience we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Taurus ascendant Taurus moon or Taurus sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so on the 31st of August we have a full moon in Aquarius Satta Bishak Nakshatra happening in your 10th house so this full moon could illuminate some kind of struggle that you might have going on and this is between light and dark but for you specifically this is within a work context so there could be a struggle between working for yourself versus working for someone else maybe you would like to work for yourself but you're having to work for other people uh, this could be a struggle of light and dark within your team if you are in a workplace um, you know perhaps you're on one side of the team perhaps others are on a different side you know um, now if you're not working this could be a struggle between your place in the world or how much you are seen by the world uh, you know do you want to participate more in the world or not it's okay whatever the answer is it doesn't matter but what we're looking at here is we're looking at just the struggle within yourself what is that when it comes to the world outside your your place in the world um, I've got the note here no matter where you work or don't work this can be an opportunity to reframe what work means in your mind so for example I was unemployed uh, for I can't remember I think it was either nine months or a whole year it was a long time one time many years ago and this is when I was doing the whole job thing but there was a time where I just couldn't find a job it was very difficult and so what I did was in my mind I, I've got the note here I became a self-appointed director of the creating work for myself project right so I turned that into a work project um, because a psychic I called a psychic I called Sonia Choquette on the radio anyway she said to me what do you do for a living because I said when is the work coming through she's like and she was frustrated with me she was like Ugh, you can't ask that and she said what do you do I said well I'm a writer I write for companies and that kind of thing she said get busy and I understood what and then she like got rid of me and went to the next caller but I understood what she was doing she was saying become busy if you're emitting a busy signal then the universe sees that you're busy and it gives you more work so that is a way of dealing with that um, and I've got the note here reframing what works what work means in your mind another way of doing that is I've got the note here when I worked for others I treated me as my own small business within a bigger company so that way I didn't get involved in office politics or any of that or territory or backstabbing or any of that sort of thing I, I reframed me that well I work for myself you know and, and that really helped me a lot so Taurus it's very work focused if you're not working and you don't work it's okay this could be just about how you interface with uh, the world with other people that kind of thing all right thank you Taurus we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Gemini Ascendant Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 31st of August we have a full moon in Aquarius Satta Bishak Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. So the full moon for you could illuminate a struggle between light and dark and because this is happening in the ninth house this could be a struggle around who is truly in charge of you and your life. Okay so is is what your parents think more important than what you think is what society thinks more important than what you think is what your astrologer thinks more important than what you think you should always take your power back listen to the astrologer listen to parents listen to society 
And then take your power back and you decide. You make your mind up. You be in charge of your life. Now, in the contemplation of where your power lies, uh, just the pure contemplation of that might bring a lot of power back to you because you'll just recognize where your power has been going. And in the awareness and recognition of that, it'll, you'll be amazed. More power will just automatically come back to you. Okay, so Gemini, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. This is Cancer moon cancer ascendant cancer sun and per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so on the 31st of august we have a full moon in aquarius sattva shark nakshatra happening in your eighth house so this full moon could illuminate any struggle that you might be having at home it could be with your partner it could be something to do with your in-laws it could be something to do with sh shared resources as well um, so I've got here, yeah, this is quite interesting. This, this can just illuminate an issue that, that you might be having. And I've got some notes here around anger. This is, this is really interesting. This might be specifically for someone. It might not be, I don't know, but I'll just read what I have here. So I've got here that if you are experiencing anger at someone, see it as temporary. Okay. And see that the anger is not you. Okay, the anger is just something that comes and it's something that goes. So you can look at yourself, you can really talk to yourself and go, well, four days ago, I wasn't angry at that person. And today I'm really angry. But I know that in maybe four, five, six, seven days, the anger will die down. Maybe longer, maybe seven days. I don't know. I don't know how long it'll take, but like you can observe that... Maybe a month ago, you weren't angry at them. And maybe within a month, you won't be angry at them. However long that time frame is, I don't know. But this will get you to ask the question, so where is the anger? And you'll see that, wow, the anger's in me. Okay, and it also means that you're probably holding on. Now, what are you holding on to? I've got here, you're holding on to a memory. And why are you holding on to a memory? Because you don't want to be hurt again. And this is that kind of inner child logic where it's like, well, I better hold on to this stuff because I don't want any more. You know, and we use it as a defense. We use the memory as a defense mechanism. But what the holding on to that does is it, it attracts more of it or that thing will play out again. So we really have to just let it go and just totally let it go so no more holding on to memories as a defense mechanism i don't know why i need to say that here in cancer but for some reason i do you can let me know in the comments below if that message was important for someone but basically this full moon could illuminate some kind of internal struggle and what you need to do all you need to do is just become aware and as you become aware your power of observation grows your power of awareness grows your watchfulness grows and when that power grows the problem becomes smaller Okay, so that's all you have to do, Cancer. All right, thank you for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now on the 31st of August, there is a full moon in Aquarius Sattva Bishak Nakshatra happening in your seventh house. Now this full moon could illuminate any struggle you have with being yourself while being in a relationship do you find leo that when you're in a relationship you give all of your energy all of your time and energy to that other person okay or do you still look after yourself maintain your own life still spend time with your friends your family are you good at looking after yourself while being in a relationship that is the thing that could be illuminated here uh, this could also illuminate any struggle between being totally independent and needing another person. Okay, because this is, and this is happening in your seventh house, it's all about balance. So we do need some independence, but we also do need other people. Are you getting that balance right? Um, I've got here the struggle of wanting to be seen versus being alone. There's that as well. So Leo... Interesting contemplation points there for you on that full moon. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Virgo, 
Virgo welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Virgo ascendant Virgo moon or Virgo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so on the 31st of August we have a full moon in Aquarius Satyabhishak nakshatra happening in your sixth house so this full moon could illuminate any struggle you're having within client relationships isn't that interesting so if you are a service professional this would apply to you uh, you know there are certain professions and I've raised this one here which is um, are you just a yes man or are you getting an opportunity to really use your expertise and be influential with your client base or your team or, or whatever it is uh, the reason this one came up is because when I was contemplating sixth house and service and work and all that kind of thing, I was thinking about my time when I worked in advertising and very often in advertising, we would just be the yes man to the client. That's what we would do because they're paying the money. So we just give them what they wanted, even though a lot of times we knew, oh, that looks terrible. But, you know, they were paying the big bills, so we would do what they wanted. Um, so that's why I brought that one in there. But if we have a look at what are some other struggles you could be going through in sixth house, I mean, it could be if, if you're in, in a, you know, I mean, yeah, you could be in a legal case or something like that. Some of the fine lines uh, might be where, where people draw the line. It might become apparent to you, that kind of thing could happen. Could also be a struggle between how you compare yourself to others versus how you value yourself and yeah I, I really like uh, people who 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 respect their own opinion actually um, famous designers and artists and people like that some of them got to be you know famous because they say things like well I only like my own opinion and that's actually what is the thing that took them to the top. So I find that pretty interesting. So a struggle between how you compare yourself to others versus how you compare yourself only to who you were yesterday. Okay, that's a classic Virgo remedy. Only compare yourself to who you were yesterday. That's important. Compete just with yourself. All right, Virgo, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, <laughs> Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 31st of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Satyavishak Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So the full moon could illuminate any struggle you have with how you parent your children, for example. Uh, could also be to do with your creativity in life. Are you getting a chance to express yourself creatively in life? Are you giving yourself that chance? Okay, and it might be that you look around your life and you say, well, my time is just being zapped by work and family and all, all these different areas. But you will have to make time if you want to be creative and, and you know, experience the joy of your own creativity. You're going to have to create the time, Libra. And of course, with the parenting your children thing, there are so many fine lines to, you know, uh, look at there. And, and basically, this full moon is just going to illuminate the situation. And just by becoming more aware more watchful and that your observation power goes up you'll see a lot of your problems will diminish thank you so much for tuning in libra we are now going to welcome scorpio scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining i'm just checking on the time it's okay scorpio this is scorpio ascendant scorpio moon or scorpio sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so on the 31st of august we've got a full moon in aquarius satyabhishak nakshatra happening in your fourth house so this full moon could illuminate any struggle you have in relationship with your mother uh, or how you were raised how you were nurtured it could also illuminate a struggle between work and rest you know are you getting enough time to rest equally are you doing enough work you know uh, and this full moon might help you to fine-tune any balances there we need a good balance between both energies 
All right, Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 31st of August, we have got a full moon in Aquarius, Satya Bishak Nakshatra, happening in your third house. So this full moon could illuminate any struggle you have regarding your confidence in the world. You know, are you overconfident? Are you not confident enough? And in some areas, you will be overconfident. In some areas, you won't have enough. So what are those areas? And in the illumination and contemplation of this, you'll be amazed at how much just automatically starts to get resolved or sorted out. Um, I've got here, in what areas are you confident and where could you do with a boost? This could also be to do with comprehension um, and, and it could illuminate your needs kind of when it comes to comprehension, especially if you're studying a subject or any of that and what can you do better to study better. Um, I'll give you an example. If you look up the Pomodoro technique, that will help. I think you work for 25 minutes and you have a break for five minutes. I've been finding that to be really helpful. All right, Sagittarius, well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. I think we're okay. All right, now on the 31st of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Satna Vishak Nakshatra in your second house. So this full moon could illuminate any struggle you have regarding dependence on family or your independence from the family. Okay. Uh, it could also highlight any struggle you have with creating your own independent wealth in life. And with Saturn here in this place, Saturn is really helping you to create independent wealth, to create savings, to get you more financially healthy. Got here, it could highlight the discipline and patience needed to create big rewards in your life. One of the things I've learned recently about Saturn is that it's all about patience. And Saturn also gives the biggest rewards. So if you cultivate a lot of patience, the big rewards are going to come in. I might have said that in the last monthly, in the September monthly as well. But Capricorn, I'm wishing you well across this full moon. It's a good full moon for contemplation of, as I say, inner struggles. We're, we're all getting that opportunity to contemplate our inner struggles at this time. Aquarius, Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 31st of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius Satya Bishak Nakshatra happening in your first house. So this full moon could illuminate struggles that you have encountered over your lifetime between light and dark. Yes, yeah, so this one's really interesting. Aquarius, welcome. This is your full moon. And even if you're the Nishta Nakshatra or Purva Bhadrapada Nakshatra, it's okay because Satya Vishak is right. Satya Vishak Nakshatra is right in the middle of Aquarius. So even if you're Dhanishta, even if you're Purva Bhadrapada, this is your full moon. Okay, this is the big one. This is the big Aquarian full moon. Uh, and yeah, it's happening in Satya Bishak in your first house. Yeah, this is you. This is all about you. So you're accustomed to this Aquarius. You know um, about the struggles within, between light and dark. And this is why psychology is your realm. A lot of great psychologists, psychiatrists, people who deal with the mind, they all come out of Aquarius, so they got 11th house stuff going on or, or this kind of thing. Um, and yeah, they'll have like a strong Saturn, but a, a, a weaker sun as well. So, so Aquarius is strong in a person who looks at, you know, yeah, light and dark. If you watch the introduction, I gave the example of Robin Williams. And he was not only just a brilliant comedian, I mean, his comedy was psychological therapy for so many people. You know, he, he really, um, he really knew this, this part of the zodiac really well. 
Yeah, I've got here, many of you may have a Satta Vishak ascendant moon or sun. Okay, but even if you're Dhanishta or Purva Bhadrapada, it doesn't matter. Satta Vishak is, is still, you know, such a, a big energy here in Aquarius, so you, you'll, you'll have a good feeling for it. I've got here, how do you tap into your infinite goodness? And how do you recognize that all shadows and demons are just illusions? And that is, you know, what Aquarians come here to learn and master, I do believe. They come here to figure out, you know, the main principle that only love is real. And that's something you'll learn from the Course in Miracles. But yeah, only love is real, right? That's, that's it. So any str internal struggles that you're having at the moment, this full moon will help illuminate those. And just see, just contemplate, just observe, be watchful. When your observation power goes up, when your awareness power goes up, the problem diminishes. Okay, so that's what you want to do. That's why we meditate. We meditate to increase our observational powers. Aquarius, thank you so much for joining. I waffled on extra there because this is your full moon. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Pisces. Ascendant Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now on the 31st of August we have got a full moon in Aquarius Satta Bishak Nakshatra happening in your 12th house. So this full moon could eliminate any struggles you have encountered on your journey to becoming more conscious. Okay so when you come up against a limit what do you do or what has been your way of handling that limit um, so this could be something that highlights limits it's interesting i did talk about blocks and limits in the september outlook this is a little bit similar pisces you are also a little bit similar here to aquarius uh, if you want to watch the aquarius one as well you are welcome to do so um, but this is more this is kind of more about consciousness this is more just pure in in aquarius i, I talked a little bit more about psychology but here for you it's spiritual consciousness and we're really looking at yeah you you know are clearly on a path where you want to grow your consciousness but what are the limits what are the blocks what do you come up against what is blocking you from increasing your consciousness yeah or your powers of observation okay and this is just something to contemplate in the contemplation of because what we want in life is more contemplation more observation more increasing of our observational powers this is why we meditate we do that so that we expand when we expand, the problem actually becomes smaller and it's easier to handle. This is why it's really, really important to meditate because sometimes we can't shrink the problem. We try to touch the outside world and we try to change the outside world and shrink the problem. Sometimes you just can't do that. So instead, it's better if you come back within and you expand. When you expand, the problem naturally becomes smaller. Okay, it's technically staying the same size, but when you grow in consciousness, that problem becomes small. It really does. This is why we really need to meditate. So I've got here, do you recognize that all limits are illusions and do you shine on any way? Do you recognize that, you know, limits and blocks and all this, they're just the clouds. But if I shine brighter, then... I can do anything and the other thing that you might be observing at this time is that what limitations zap your power or zap your energy okay so that is something to look at there but Pisces you guys are the most spiritual sign you're the most capable of this beautiful uh, meditation and you know um, ability to just be the all is one so you're you're very much equipped to use this full moonlight to to a great advantage you know you, you can definitely increase your observational powers 
at this time Pisces well I want to thank you for tuning in I want to thank you and anyone who's watched the whole video for tuning in thank you so much let me know how you get on in the comments below I'm wishing you a good full moon a good blue moon you know these things don't happen too often so take care everyone and I look forward to seeing you next time.